the I want to say before we start too that cancellations. We're getting into like the snowy season now. Um, so if there are any cancellations, I will be texting Kate, um, and then she will announce it to you. Would it be on Facebook or would you? Facebook would be the best, but you can always call the library and double check. Okay, there you go. Um, I knock on wood. I don't cancel any classes. Um, I've been doing this for five years now, maybe more, and I I canceled my first class um, a couple weeks ago. So hopefully I don't have to, um, but no promises. Um, so how the class is set up is every day we are going to review the alphabet, um, practice that every single time, and then we will like today we'll learn signs and then next week we're going to review those signs and then build from that. Um, so every week we're going to review and then build on to it. Um, and alphabet we're going to practice every single class because that is the most important thing. If you learn the alphabet then you can communicate with any deaf person. Um, and then I always like to end the class with a few fun facts about the deaf uh, community and deaf culture because um, it's one unique thing about ASL is that it's connected to um, the language itself, which not many um, languages can say that their language is connected to a culture. Um, so we'll end class with those. All right, you guys ready to get started? Okay, the first alphabet. So this is A, and I always think of A as the, um, your thumb being the tail end of that lowercase a. B, C, D is going to be a pointer finger. Yep, so what helps me remember D is B is in direction, and when you give directions, you point. So D, E, F, G. So it's going to be your pointer finger and your thumb, and that thumb can be anywhere, so you can rest it against your other fingers. It can be up almost like you're pinching, or it can be up in the air. Ooh. Yep. H, same thing. That thumb can be resting, it can be up, or up in the air. Doesn't matter. H, I is that pinky. J, you're gonna draw with your pinky. Now K is gonna be a two with your thumb on that middle finger knuckle. So that's K, L, M is going to be three fingers over your thumb. So to me it kind of looks like an M. And then N is going to be two fingers over that thumb. And again, to me it kind of looks like an M. O. Now P is going to be just like K. So it's going to be a two with that thumb on your middle finger knuckle but pointed down. So that's P. Q is going to be almost like you're picking something up or pinching. Q. <coughs> R. S. T is going to be one finger over that thumb. U. V. W, X is going to be a bent pointer finger, so X, Y, and Z, you're going to draw in the air. Yeah, how do you guys feel? <laughs> feel like you need to stretch a little bit? Um, so with A, so A and X, so the only difference between those two is that thumb. So what helps me remember is that that thumb on the side is almost like the tail end of that A. Um, G is the same as Q, but just different um, location, I guess you could say. So G, Q, and like I said, P, I mean, I'm sorry, K is up like this, P is down. Um, Trying to think of other things that. Yeah, you guys ready to do it again? Yeah. All right. A, B, C, 
B, we're going to use that pointer. B. Oh, also with E, this is what I was going to say. Um, you don't want what they call a streaming E, so you don't want them very far apart. Um, but they also don't have to be touching either. So you can have a little bit of space, um, but you don't want it to be like an obnoxious E way out here. So try to close it up a little bit. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, kind of. I didn't think of it like like that. E. F. G. H. I. J. K. So it's just going to be a two with that thumb on that knuckle. L. M. It's going to be three over that thumb. N. It's going to be two. O, T, it's going to be the same as K, Q, Q, R, S, T, so it's going to be one finger over, U, V, W, X, Y, and Z. Good. How do you guys feel about spelling your name? You guys got it down <laughs> after that? I'm just kidding. You really don't have to. Um, <laughs> up here at the end of class, um, I have the, the whole alphabet, so you guys can take this home and practice. Um, and then I have other worksheets up here, too. well, not worksheets, but just stuff that you can take home. Um, so what I want to say about the alphabet is, so my name has two T's in it, so how would you spell a name with double letters like that? Um, so first thing, you don't want to throw the letter when you're spelling. You want to keep your hand in the same area and just move those fingers. Um, so for example, my name is Brittany. So that TT, so it's going to be B-R-I-T-T. -T. So I tap it. So if it's like L-L, L-L. Um, anything like that. I can't think of any other N. names. N. N. Yep, so you could do N-N or N-N. But again, you don't want to be throwing every single letter at them. That makes it really hard to read. Um, so you want to make sure you keep your hand in the same spot and just, just a subtle tap or a subtle tap forward. Does that make sense? Um, now, it, when you spell your name, um, I would practice spelling your first name and last name. Um, one thing in deaf culture is that it is almost rude if you don't spell your full name. Um, so you always want to give your first name and your last name. So how do you spell both? Like, how do you sign space? Um, so you just pause a second. So I'll give you an example of my name. So it would be Brittany Huntley. Um, so, so it would be almost like that space or a pause in between. So you don't want them both combined in. Um, you just want to either pause or move to the side a little bit um, for that last name. Any questions so far? All right. Um, so the sign for name. So it's always going to be like two H's, one hand on top of the other. So that's the sign for name. Um, oh, and dominant hand on top. So I'm right hand dominated, so it would be my right hand on top. Um, it's, I guess it's like one of the rules, I guess. <laughs> Um, so they always say that either your dominant hand is on top or it's the one moving. So for example, um, name, my right hand's on top, or soccer, the sign for soccer, it's on, my dominant hand is on the bottom, but it's the one moving. So that, so it's one or the other, if that makes sense. Um, now for a sign like octopus, um, 
I'm not really sure which one it is. So this is the sign for octopus. Fun fact. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, but the bottom hand is the one moving, but my right hand is on top. So if I I don't know if I sign it upside down, not upside down, but like backwards, because my left hand is the one that's moving on that one. That's what just comes naturally to me is putting my um, left hand on the bottom and having that one move. But I could be honestly signing that wrong and having it. It should be signed like this. So it's honestly more of what's comfortable to you. Um, but don't try to stay consistent. Don't switch it up. So what I always use as an example is black cat. You don't want to sign black cat. You want to sign black cat. Does that make sense? So you want to keep it on that same hand. You don't want to be switching it up. Um, so going from there, name. So this is a sign for name. So if you want to say, my name is, my name, and then you stop. Yes. So, my name, and it's always caps twice, name. Um, now going from there, let's practice spelling a couple of words, and, uh, and then I'll give you guys the sign form. So just some simple words like dog. So D O G D O G dog. So there's a couple of different signs for dog. You can either just pat your hip or you can just pretend to snap or you can do both. Um, I know a couple people that do both like this. Um, I typically only sign like pretending to snap dog. Um, another one, cat. C A T. T. Cat. So the, make sure it's almost like an F. So make sure those whiskers are out on that sign. You can sign it with two, but most people sign it with one. Um, another one is cow. C O W. Cow. So it's going to be a Y with that thumb on your temple and twisting it backwards. Cow. Uh, okay, one more. C O O. So that's one that you can either tap or a fancy way to do it is B O O K. So you can slide it. Um, I typically don't do that, um, but you could. So it's like putting an O here and an O here in that word book. So B O O K. Sign for book. Pretty obvious, right? You guys know more signs than you think. Uh, for instance, Loser. Yes. Oh. Yep. Yep. That is the sign for loser. Um, you know what two is? Whatever. Woodchuck. Woodchuck. Really? Interesting. Woodchuck. <laughs> or double loser. Yeah. Um, uh, what's another one? Um, how about this one? Milk. Milk. Yes. But now we just use one hand. Milk. Oh, really? Okay. Like just a drink. Yes. Right. Yeah. I mean, two milk would be yeah would be yeah, okay. would be showing that. Okay. Um, so milk would just be like almost like squeezing that udder. Um, right. So that's a sign for milk. Um, what would be another sign that you guys would know? Book. Now, what about this? If I do yes, drinking yes, that's like the alcoholic drink sign. <laughs> to drink like water, milk, tea it would just be that C cup. Um, Ooh, okay. um, Oh, so what if I sign this? What do you guys think that is? So we know this, right? We know this is book. To read that. To read. Yep. So that's a sign. So this is like your your eye going down the page. That would be reading. Um, so yeah. Any other questions? So now we'll do pronouns, and then we'll add on to those. So pronouns, you know, almost just... 
I must have a rhythm to it to help me remember um, remember all of them together. Um, so I do I, me, my, you, your, they. That's how I put them. Um, so I, or me, yep, just point to yourself. Yep, so I or me, my, it being possessive, you, your, being possessive. So with your palm out, that's what's going to make it that possessive noun. So your, my. And I always think of it as like pushing it towards that person or pulling it towards me. So you, your, me, my. And then they, obviously more than one, would be pointing to more than one person. Um, in sign language, it's not really rude to point to someone unless it's like deliberately trying to be rude at them. Um, but in English, and we always, moms always say, oh, don't point, it's rude. Like, in sign language, people point all the time. Um, yep, so I, me, my, you, your. So, um, so going off of that, now we will do colors. Um, and then we'll build sentences from there using um, names and colors, okay? So the sign for colors, like the general sign for colors, is color. Yep, just moving those fingers on your chin. Color. Um, so we'll start with the ones on the face. So red is going to be that pointer finger coming off your chin. Red. Orange is going to be almost like milk, but it's going to be on your chin. And that is the drink, the color, the juice, all of that. So orange. Um, pink is going to be that P. So two. Thumb on that middle finger knuckle pointing down. But in this sense, you're going to turn it up. And that middle finger is going to be on your chin. So make sure that pointer finger is still there. That's still that P. That same hand shape. But now it's just on your chin right there. So pink. Um, brown. Brown is going to be a B going down the sides. Brown. Um, black is going to be your pointer finger going straight across your forehead. Black. Um, tan is going to be a T, just like brown on the side. So we have brown, and then we have tan. Yep. Um, and then the, the rest are pretty easy. So we have yellow, which is going to be a Y, and you shake it. Um, blue is going to be a B, and you shake it. Purple is going to be a P. Good. Shake it. Green is going to be a G. Yep, just like that. And you shake it. And then the last two, white. So it's going to be all your fingers on your chest and then all of them coming off and coming together. White. And then gray. So I always think of it as a mix between black and white. Now make sure those fingers are spread apart. If they're together like this, it's a totally different sign, and it means whatever, doesn't matter, um, what other English words go with it? I can't think of them now, but yeah, so it doesn't matter, whatever, gray. <laughs> Big difference. <laughs> so make sure those uh, fingers are spread apart. Any questions so far? Oh, rainbow. Everyone always asks me what the sign for rainbow is. So it's going to be a four. Put those fingertips together and bring them down. Rainbow. All right, so does anyone remember the sign for just general sign for colors? Good. Colors. So we got red. Red. Pink is going to be that P. Pink. Orange. Good. Um, brown. 
Good. Yeah, I'll give you guys a second to think about it. So it's kiss, brown, tan. Good. Yep, so tan is going to be that T, which is one finger over that thumb. Tan. Black. Yep, across the forehead. Good. Yep, so it's a straight finger across the forehead. Make sure you don't bend it. I don't want to confuse you guys, so I don't want to tell you yet, but I'm sure we'll, we'll learn it at some point. So black, um, yellow, all the rest are pretty easy. Yellow, blue, yep, it's going to be that B, blue, green, it's going to be a G, green, um, what else am I missing? Oh, so then white is going to just, yep, come off the chest white and gray. Gray. Good. Now, when any other colors, any other fancy colors like turquoise, maroon, teal, anything like that, it's finger spelled. Um, so that's why it's important to learn the alphabet is because you're going to finger spell more than you think. Um, so, for example, if I wanted to sign whale, I would just sign the sign for whale. If I wanted to say a specific sign or a, like a specific whale, I would have to spell that. Um, and street names um, and specific foods will have, um, you'll have to finger spell. So that's why it's very important to learn the alphabet because it will cover everything that one, that you don't know the sign for, or two, words that don't have signs that are spelled anyways. Um, so yeah, any questions so far? What is autocorrect? Autocorrect? <laughs> yeah, so like you type autocorrect, is there a sign for autocorrect? Oh my gosh, I <laughs> don't know. Um, I would sign... Because I can't spell for... I can't yeah, either. I Right, yeah, right. So, uh, right. I so I have a paper in here that I will show you guys. Um, I'll. Hopefully I have enough. I can put it up here. Um, it's a paragraph that every word is spelled wrong, but you can still understand it. Like you can still read the whole paragraph. Um, it's all the same letters, just mixed up in that word. So it shows you that if you have the first letter and the last letter correct, and all the other ones are kind of mixed up in there, but they're still there, but just in the wrong spot, they'll still get it. Just like this paragraph. Um, so autocorrect. I would sign autocorrect. <laughs> That's what I would sign. Um, and it's funny because hearing, everyone hates finger spelling. Hearing people hate it because um, most of the time it's because they don't want to use their fingers. Like it's just awkward. They It's, it's hard for them to produce the sign. Um, and deaf people typically don't like it because of the spelling. So we all like hate it. It's not the best thing, um, but it's just something to make it more clear. Um, also, when you're spelling and you become like really, really fluent at it, don't, it's not a race to see who can spell it the fastest. So even if you practice your game over and over and over again and you have it down, you don't, you still don't want to spell it fast because that's still going to be hard for the deaf person to read it. So you still want to be slow and steady and clear is the goal. Um, so yeah, so there's a lot in, uh, that you'll learn in this class that you, you just spell it. Um, so going from there, we'll make some, um, some sentences. So the sign for favorite is going to be a middle finger tucked out on your chin. So touching your chin, favorite. Or another sign you can use is the word like. Now, what does that look like? It looks like white, right. So white is going to be all your fingers on your chest coming off. Like, L-I-K-E, is going to be that middle finger and thumb. The only ones touching and coming off and the only ones touching. So like, white. Yeah, they're pretty similar. So you have like, white. So favorite. Favorite? Like. So, 
to say my favorite color is, um, yeah, that's a long sentence. Um, <laughs> really simple though, because in ASL, everything's backwards. Um, so the example that I always give is in English, you would say, what is your name? In ASL, it would be your name what? So is, ours, um, all of those are just like thrown out the window. So in this sentence that uh, is my favorite color is, let's say green. So my favorite color is green. So we would flip that around. So it would be green, my favorite color. Yeah, so it would be green, my favorite color. Now, in those sentences, what they say, they technically not backwards, but in English, it looks like it's backwards. Um, they just put the topic first. So the topic of that sentence is the color green. And what's the comment after it? It says, my favorite. So with the sentence, what is your name? The topic of that sentence is your name. And then after that would be, what's the comment for that? What? It's a question. Um, so we'll get into all of that, but for starters, saying your favorite color. So you sign your favorite color. So let's say blue. Yeah, so practice that. Practice spell, or uh, saying your favorite color. Good. Good. Now also, it could be argued that the topic of that sentence is your favorite color. So that like there's going to be some that are that can be switched like that. Um, so it's not wrong to necessarily say like my favorite color is green. It's not necessarily wrong, um, but I want to get you guys in the habit of always putting it backwards and having um, having that English sentence switched around. Um, so, how would you sign, my name is? Do you guys remember? So, what's the sign for my? Good. Yep, tall in the chest. Yep, so my, anyone remember the sign for name? Good. Name. Yep, and then you spell your name. Um, what's the sign for like? Good. Yep, so it's going to be that thumb and middle finger, like. Now I will sign to you guys a color and you guys tell me what it is, okay? Brown, good. Um, green. Feeling. You guys overwhelmed yet? No? I can't yeah. remember where my hand is though. Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> something, yeah, you'll find out. It's like, why don't you do what you like what I want you to do? Um, yeah, people have that hard time all the time. It's like you're not doing what I what I'm telling you to do. Um, another thing I always say is that people like to talk to themselves. So as as you notice, most of the alphabet, your palm is out. But some people spell it like this. So it's like, don't talk to yourself, flip it out, and talk to the other person. <laughs> um, so in most of it, your palm is going to be out. So obviously like G, H, Q, um, J, those are all kind of in more. Um, but make sure most of those, your palm is out. Um, what you'll see on this paper is that um, on every single alphabet, I don't know why they do it like this, but G looks like this and H looks like this. So everything else you see is from this point of view. So everything on that paper is gonna be like this. Now, except G and H, they're gonna be shown like this, but that's the view from here. 
Does that make sense? So on that paper, you're going to see a G looking at it from this point of view. Right, but it's not out like this. So those are the, those are the two that pers the perspective is switched. Instead of it being from here, G and H are from here. So it's not out like this. Because that, that hurts. <laughs> that's, that's very awkward and very hard to do. Um, so those are the two that are switched in. Um, another thing, another fun fact about deaf people is that they rarely get carpal tunnel. And that is because the, it's, it's natural, it's fluid, it's, there's no like restraining like, feel, like feelings like this. Um, the people who do get carpal tunnel when they sign are lazy interpreters. Um, so if a deaf person hears that there's an interpreter who just had carpal tunnel surgery, they're like, look down on them. They're like, I never want them to be my interpreter because that means that they sign lazy. They sign wrong. It's not, it's a natural communication um, skill and it's, so it's, it shouldn't give you carpal tunnel ever, ever. Um, one thing in college, so all of my professors in college were deaf. Um, and so when we would be, when they would be teaching us, when we would be learning and signing, obviously it was like, I want to say that it was the chairs that were like connected to the desk. Um, and they would yell at us if we put our, our elbows on that desk in front of us and then started signing. Because that is what causes carpal tunnel. That is a nasty habit to get into and it's just lazy. So we always had to sit back and have it natural. So they always say, um, stay in your natural signing space, which is from your shoulders to your waist. Obviously there's stuff up here like black um, that's going to be out of that. But I would say from like the top of your head to your hips and your shoulders, that is what they call your signing space. So if you're all the way down here, it's like you're bringing your body to your hands instead of your hands to your body, and it just it causes problems. Um, so yeah, so that's a little off-topic fun fact. Um, I don't know what my point was and all that. Oh, cancer. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you. There was a point. Um, so I always, um, even in school, like I'm always stretching my wrists. I'm always moving them. Um, at, sometimes at the end of the day, my hands are sore. Um, but the more you move them and the more you're, you're using them, they're going to be, they're going to become more flexible. But yeah, it's a weird thing to say like, oh, my hands aren't that flexible. You don't think it's a real thing, but it is. Um, yeah. So going off of that. Um, wow, we're like flying through this. All I have left are um, fun facts. We'll just get into those. Um, so my first fun fact is this sign. Does anyone know what this sign is? <laughs> I love you. Yes. Does anyone know why this is the sign for I love you? Yes. Yes. So this is the sign for I. This is the sign for L. And this is the sign for Y. So you put it all together and that's what you get. So here's your I, here's your L, and here's your Y. That is why that is a sign for I love you. Fun fact. Um, deaf people use this sign um, quite often, but not in the sense that you think. Um, so <laughs> during my, um, oh my gosh, what is it called? Why can't I think of it? After college, not before you graduate, but internship? yeah, thank you. Internship. I knew it started with an I and I knew the sign for it, but couldn't think of the word. Um, during that, I was with my mentor, following her around on um, a bunch of interpreting assignments. And afterwards, um, the guy was like, thank you, and went like this. And I was like, whoa, dude, I just met you. Um, but they do it as a sign of appreciation. So um, a bunch of deaf people and interpreters they'll do that back to each other, like, thank you so much, I appreciate what you do for us. Um, so they don't use it in the sense of like, I love you. Um, they use it more of a really, really big thank you. Does that make sense? Um, next one is, let's see. Um, so does anyone know what ASL stands for? American Sign Language. So that means that, yes, there are many, many, many other sign languages out there. I want to say there's 
uh, over 100, like I want to say like 177 or something like that. Um, American Sign Language is mostly closely related to French Sign Language, believe it or not. Um, it's just because of the deaf history and the French deaf people coming over here, helping us set up the first schools with the deaf here and all of that. So that's how, so American and French Sign Language are the most closely related languages. Um, now, British Sign Language, believe it or not, is completely different than American Sign Language. You wouldn't think it is just because of British, English, American, English, um, but they're completely different. The only thing I can tell you about British Sign Language is their vowels. Um, in the alphabet, they, our alphabet, we only use one hand. Um, in British Sign Language, they use both hands. Um, and I can only show you the name or the signs for uh, the vowels just because they're the easiest and that's the only thing I remember. A, E, I, O, U. And that's how you sign it. So if I were to sign my name, obviously this wouldn't be B in British Sign Language, but in this case I'll do B, R, I, T, T, A, N, Y. So that's how it would be signed. So this is A, this is a sign for A, E, I, O, and U. Now, that comes in handy when I'm teaching vowels to a, a first grader, because that's what I use, A-E-I-O-U, um, to help my little deaf boy remember what the vowels are. So he, obviously that's not how he spells, but that's how it helps him remember his vowels. Yeah, fun fact. Um, and the other thing we did is, is spelled grammar is backwards, Last one is, man, we're flying through this, guys, um, is sign mains. Has anyone heard of that, like name signs or sign mains? So they are used, um, instead of spelling a person's name over and over and over again, like, because um, obviously, like I said, they don't like spelling, just like we don't like finger spelling. Um, so they create name signs for each other. Um, the rules to the... Having a name sign is that a deaf person has to give it to you. You can't just make up your own uh, name sign. Um, a deaf person has to be given to you, and most of the time it's based on characteristics, like what you look like, your personality, stuff like that. Um, so, for example, my uh, sign name is this. That is not a sign that's, like, you're not going to see that and be like, oh, that's the sign for, you know, banana. Like, it's not, it's not a sign. If I go up to a deaf person I've never met and I sign this, they're going to be like, I don't know what you're saying. Uh -huh. So you always say, you always spell your name first and then give them your name sign. So this is what it would look like. Hi, my name is Brittany Cutley, sign name. So that's how it would look. Now, why do I have this sign name? Why is that it? Um, there is a deaf camp named Camp Mark 7. Has anyone heard of that? It's in the Adirondacks. It's a deaf camp run by deaf people and I went there um, during one of my internships and I stayed for two weeks and one of the little girls there, she was probably 10 at the time and she was like, I can't believe you don't have a name sign. She's like, I'm going to give you one. So she spent all day thinking about it and she comes back to me at the end of the day and says, it's this. And I said, okay, I can't say no. Like, most hearing people hate their sign names, and but they have to deal with it because that's how the deaf people identify as them. So, like, they, you don't really get a choice. Um, mine's this because she said, Brittany sounds like brilliant. I know, thank you. Uh, <laughs> Brittany sounds like brilliant, and the sign for brilliant is this. So she used this hand shape from this, and because my cheeks are red, she puts it down here. So that is why that is my name sign, Brittany. Um, a bunch of deaf people have their name signs like on their chest right here, almost like a badge, um, and they do um, like their initials. So like um, my, one of my professor's names in college was this. So it was just first initial, last initial. So B, C was his sign name. Um, I know a J, K for first name and last name. So a lot of generic sign names are gonna be on the chest right there, almost like a badge. Um, I know one of my professor's names was 
Dorothy, and she, her sign name is this. Now, this is also the sign for where in sign language. So, it's like, well, why would you use the same sign if that's a name, and now you know it's an actual sign? Well, because her story was that in college, she was always late. And so everyone would be asking, where's Dorothy? Where's Dorothy? And so they just added that it's a D, but it's also the sign for where. So, where's Dorothy? So that was why that is her name sign. So there's always stories behind them. Um, I know a girl who has really long curly hair, and I want to say it's an S, or maybe it's a D. I can't remember. But it's like it goes down like this because of her really long curly hair. So it all just depends. So yeah. Any questions? No? All right. Well, we got 10 minutes left, so I'll keep talking to you guys. Um, up here, I have the alphabet. I have um, the outline of what, like, I literally have the same copy myself. Um, so you can take that to help you remember what we did. Now, obviously, they're all English. There's no signs on here. I wish it was Hogwarts and I could make pictures move, but I can't. Um, it just, they don't come out right. They don't look right. You, you add arrows, but you're like, I still don't know what that movement is. So I usually don't put signs on paper. Um, it just makes it more confusing. But here's all the English words um, to help you kind of refresh your memory of what we talked about to hopefully remember or jog your memory of the signs themselves. Um, in the middle here, I have um, websites that you can go to. Um, so you always want to be careful when you're going on to um, sign language websites because typically, one, they're wrong, or two, they're run by hearing people and they're going to give you the English signs. And it's completely different from ASL. Um, so here, all of these are run by deaf people. Um, they are obviously very accurate. Um, and so there's a couple of dictionaries on there. So you go to the website, you type in, almost like a Google search, you type in the word that you want and a video will pop up. Um, and on one of these at least, there's different types of uh, signs that you can click on. So for example, the sign for run, the English word R-U-N. I think, I think I read that there's 27 different signs for the word run because your car could be running, your nose could be running, you could physically be running, you could be running late. So all of those signs, all of those words or those phrases have different signs in sign language. So there's going to be different like tabs that you can click on for those different words. Um, even though it's the same English word, they have different um, signs for them. Um, another one on here is finger spelling and numbers. Um, at some point, maybe next week, um, we'll be going over numbers. Um, and so that's just to help you remember the alphabet and numbers. And then at the end, the last one is um, a YouTube channel who's um, by, his name's Joseph Wheeler. He is deaf, he has deaf children. Um, and it's just a bunch of different um, signs. He does like the different states, he does emotions, I mean he does everything on there and he does it very slow and, ex and I mean he's deaf but he does it in a way that helps you understand it more. Um, yeah, any other questions before I let you guys go? If no? you see uh, like an interpreter for you know, speech or something like that, are they, I mean, are they speaking something? I mean like they would use Yeah, so like stuff on um, that you see on TV where they're in that little corner. Yeah. Fun fact about that is, I want to I, I don't want to say all of them are, but ninety nine percent of the time those people are deaf. That is a deaf person interpreting that, and you're like, well, how is that happening? They're deaf. Don't should they have an interpreter? They do have an interpreter. So they have that person talking on um, on the camera. Then they have someone off camera, so say it would be someone sitting in the seats right there, interpreting what that person is saying, and that deaf person's over here interpreting their interpretation. So why do they do that? That seems like a lot of middlemen, and like it yeah. doesn't convey it as well. It actually conveys it better because for deaf people, that is their native language. 
they should be the ones portraying it because then it's going to be even more clear to those other deaf people who are watching it. Um, and they say, oh, well, why don't they just turn on captions? Well, that's English. That's not their first language. So it's not going to be as clear or as understandable for them as if it would be a native um, deaf person interpreting that. Yeah. So like for um, the Super Bowl, um, when that person's out there signing the national anthem that they only show you like two seconds of, uh -huh, makes me so mad, makes me so mad. Um, but that person is deaf. And they have an interpreter on the side who's giving them cues as to what part of the song they're at. So they stay in rhythm. So they stay at the same point, at the same times. Um, fun fact is that one of those um, interpreters on the sidelines for that deaf person, I want to say not last year, but the year before, um, was a CUCA college graduate um, who that was their job was to interpret the for uh, the deaf person. Yeah, so those deaf people signing in those corners um, are called certified deaf interpreters. Um, so that, like a deaf person can be a deaf interpreter, and that is their job. Um, yeah, so fun fact. Um, yeah, any other questions? I'm sure you guys will um, come up with some. Um, so, yeah, so that's the class going forward. I think next week I have written down um, numbers. And I think I have written down like family members. Um, we could do like emotions, sports, stuff like that too. Um, but it's more to get you guys making full sentences. Um, oh, we'll also do like time, place, um, and who, what, when, where, why, all of those questions. Those are fun. <laughs> How do you say a question in sign language? It's fun, it's interesting. Um, so yeah, and next week, yeah, we'll definitely do numbers next week. Uh, fun fact about that is numbers are all on one hand. So I can count to 999 on one hand. Um, so when I play like can jam or cornhole in the summers, everyone always asks me to keep score because one team can be on this hand and one team can be on this hand. So it's very easy to keep track of scores. Um, but yeah, so anyways, you guys are, you guys can go. <laughs> I'll let you guys go. Um, there is no, obviously no homework in here, no Obviously, you can come up and get papers, but yeah, pretty relaxed class. So thank you guys for coming. Appreciate it.